In this video, we're going to talk about equality of matrices. Two matrices are equal if their corresponding elements are equal. So if we know that these two matrices are equal, we can say that their corresponding elements will be equal. This one, which is the last element of the first row will be same as this one. That's the last element of this first row. And we can also find the missing elements. For example, what's the value of X? If these two are equal, X has to be equal to one. What about Y? Y has to be equal to six and Z where's Z? Z has to be equal to two. Z is the last element of second row. So the last element of second row, this one is true. So Z is equal to two. And this works the other way around. What are the values of A, B and C? So A is equal to two, B is equal to eight and C is equal to seven. So that's how we can use equality of matrices to find the missing elements. One quick note, this only works when the order is same. So here the order was three by four, three rows and four columns. Here the order was three by four. So you can only compare matrices. You can only say that they're equal or not equal if their order is same. For example, these two matrices, let's compare them. Are they equal or are they not equal? First, let's check the order. So this is a square matrix three by three. This is also a square matrix three by three. So yes, we can compare them, but are they equal? Let's check. One zero zero, one zero zero, zero two zero, two two one. If even a single element is not equal, we'll say that these two matrices are not equal. Can we compare these two? No. Here the order is two by two. Here the order is two by one. We can't compare them. Comparison doesn't make sense in this case. Now let's solve some problems. We're given these two matrices and we are asked to find the values of X and Y that make these two matrices equal. Pause the video, give this a try. Okay. Now if these two are equal, their corresponding elements have to be equal. If these two are equal, we have four equations, one equation for each element. So the first one is three X plus seven equals to zero. The next one will be five equals to Y minus two, or we can write Y minus two equals to five. Then we have Y plus one equals to eight. So Y plus one equals to eight. And finally we have two minus three X equals to four. So two minus three X equals to four. So if we solve these, we'll get values of X and Y. So let's do that. Three X plus seven equals to zero. This means X is minus seven by three. So we get the value of X that makes this first element equal to this first element. Let's move on. Y minus two equals to five. This means Y is equal to seven. If Y is seven, this element is equal to this element. Then we have Y plus one equals to eight. Another equation in Y. This equation is making this element second row, first column equal to this element eight. So Y plus one equals to eight. This means Y is equal to seven. And this is good for us. We have Y equals to seven from both. This means if we have Y as seven, this element is equal to this one. And this element is equal to this one. All right. Final equation two minus three X equals to four. This means if we rearrange this three X is equal to minus two or X is equal to minus two by three. Here we have a problem when X is minus two by three, this element is equal to this element. And when X is equals to minus seven by three, this element is equal to this element, but we have to make all corresponding elements equal. So which value of X can we take? Either we take this one or we take this one, which means one of these will be left out because the values that we're getting for X are inconsistent. We can never make these two matrices equal. So these matrices can never be equal. Let's try one more X plus Y two five plus Z X Y. This is a two by two matrix. And here we have six, two, five and eight. And we have to make these two matrices equal. So find values of X, Y and Z that make these two matrices equal. Pause the video. Try this out. Okay. Let's do this together. X plus Y should be equal to six. So X plus Y equals to six. We'll get three more equations. 2 is equal to 2. Well, that's always the case. So we don't need that one. Next is 5 plus Z equals to 5. So 5 plus Z equals to 5. Then we have X into Y equals to 8. We can start with solving for Z. If 5 plus Z equals to 5, this means Z is equal to 0. Now, how do we solve for X and Y? We have a linear equation in X and Y, and then we have a product. So we know the sum, we know the product. We can use a quadratic. So we can form a quadratic 
whose sum of roots is 6 and product of roots is 8. That's t square minus 60 plus 8 equals to 0. Solutions of this quadratic will give us values of x and y. So let's solve this. t square minus 60 plus 8. So we can split the middle term. This is t square minus 2t minus 4t plus 8 equals to 0. We can take t common here. t times t minus 2 minus 4 common t minus 2 equals to 0. So we get t minus 2 times t minus 4 equals to 0 or t equals to 2 or 4. So either x is 2 and y is 4 or y is 2 and x is 4. Both of these solutions work. x and y can interchange values. So the values of x, y and z are z is 0. x and y are one of these. If one of them is 2, the other one is 4. Let's solve one more problem. Find the values of a, b, c and d from the following. Again, we have a 2 by 2 compared with another 2 by 2. We have 2a plus b, a minus 2b, 5c minus d, and 4c plus 3d. This matrix is equal to this one, 4, minus 3, 11, and 24. Now pause the video, solve for a, b, c, and d. Okay, so we'll get four equations. The first one is 2a plus b equals to 4. Then we have a minus 2b equals to minus 3. Then we have 5c minus d equals to 11. And then finally we have 4c plus 3d equals to 24. Now we can use these two to find a and b and we can use these two to find c and d. So let's do that. Here we have 2a plus b, here we have a minus 2b. Let's multiply the second one by 2. We have 2a minus 4b equals to minus 6. Now we can subtract this from the first one. We have b minus minus 4b, that's b plus 4b equals to 4 minus minus 6, that's 4 plus 6. So this is 5b equals to 10 or b equals to 2. Now we can plug b equals to 2 back in any of these. So if b is 2, 2a plus 2 equals to 4, or 2a equals to 2, or a equals to 1. So a is 1 and b is 2. Let's now find c and d. So here we have 5c minus d is 11, and 4c plus 3d equals to 24. Let's try eliminating d. Let's multiply the first one by 3. We have 15c minus 3d equals to 33. Now let's add these two. We'll have 19c equals to 24 plus 33, that's 57. So 19C is 57, or C is 57 by 19, that's 3. So A is 1, B is 2, C is 3, D is probably 4. Let's check. We have 15 minus D, because C is 3, so 5 times 3 is 15. 15 minus D equals to 11, or D is 15 minus 11. Yep, D is equal to 4.